That was funny. Okay, stand, 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 stand. Let's make a declaration. Today is a good day. Today, I'm going to be transformed by the Word of God, and I'm a walking, living testimony of His glory and of His goodness. Amen. You may be seated. Isn't that fun? Oh, God is so amazing. Um, we had, um, you remember Steve and Kim Beaumont. I'm going to tell more of that story for some of you who don't know. Um, they talk, they spoke a lot about, you know, putting God first in your business and um, really your family as well. Um, and I remember it was several months ago, I spoke to um, Ahmad and I said, I think we should think about closing on Mondays because um, he's really the only person there and it is open six days a week and the only day off was Sunday and that's the day that I'm busy. <laughs> and so I'm like, we won't really have a lot of time together. All we have is a couple of hours at night and I don't think that's healthy in the long run. And, um, and so we had that conversation. We just left it there because I thought there was going to need to be some process time on his part. <laughs> so I didn't say anything more about it and we just left it go. And Steve and Kim Beaumont came into his store, um, <clears throat> and Steve actually came out of the bathroom and said, this is going to sound really random, but I'm pretty sure I just heard the Holy Spirit say, you're supposed to close on Mondays. And I had forgotten we even had that conversation, and I was like, no way. And so we, um, I think it was starting in May, uh, we closed um, every Monday, and sales have been up yeah. ever since. crazy. Not only that, we shortened the hours as well. So it's no longer 8 o'clock every night. It's 7 o'clock. And then on Friday, it's 6 o'clock. And on Saturday, it's 5 o'clock. I said, you know what? People are going to know your hours are going to come when, they, when, when you're open. And uh, so it's, it's not about greed and the lust of money. It's about putting family and putting God first. And God has honored it as a result. Amen. And then I knew when we um, had committed to give 10% of the sales this month that it was going to be a record-breaking month because, and the suit house is one of the business highlights. So we've had people praying all month, and uh, God is just so in everything that we're doing. And it's just an exciting time. It's an exciting time to be uh, serving God. It's an exciting time to be alive in Him. Is it not? Um, we haven't spoken too much about, but we're going to be having a fall conference um, in October, and um, we'll talk more about it later. And it's about Heaven Reigns. And uh, we'll be having um, Chad Dedman from Bethel Church and uh, Jamie Galloway. So get ready for that. Um, lots and lots of good stuff going on. And the reason why we do that, we weren't even going to have one. Um, I decided I'm too busy. I'm going to burn out. I'm tired. And um, the Holy Spirit said, no, um, I want you to have th this conference. And we prayed about who to have. And then Jamie said, I actually think that this is the other person that you should bring on um, and for the conference. And we got to, uh, Matthew spoke with him and got some information. And I thought, you know, we really are all about bringing the kingdom of God to this region. We need to host people who are walking in it. And uh, so that's what we're doing so that we can do this every day of our life. And uh, so, you know, we're doing our foundation series. This is the last one. <clears throat> And I've been thinking a lot about how we talked about honor, the importance of honor, um, because we honor one another, um, and that's one of the ways, actually, we honor God, that we want to honor God first and foremost, but it is important that we honor each other, and we do that through acts of kindness and love and, and um, of being there to make somebody else's dream come true, right? It's not just about you. It's not, we're not islands onto ourselves. We're, we're part of a bigger picture. And I think that's what, you know, what makes the kingdom of God manifest itself. And so then I started thinking a lot about um, thinking. About what do we think? What do we say? And so it led me to 
like, how do I have uh, an empowered life and how do I empower others? And it starts with what I think and then it leads to what I say and then actions follow. So I want to talk about our thinking today. I want to talk about our mindsets, the way that we think. Um, there's um, seven ha habits of highly effective people. Um, there's a book out. It's, I think that he sold over like 15 million. It's not a Christian book. Um, Stephen Covey uh, is the author of that book. And so I was looking up. I thought, what is it that these successful, empowering people do? And one of the things he says in here, he says, Covey coined the idea of abundance mentality or abundance mindset, a concept in which a person believes there are enough resources and successes to share with others. And this is not even, I don't know if he's a Christian. I mean, it, there's no scripture support here. But do you get what I'm saying? Is that, is that amazing? So do you have a mentality of abundance? Do you have an abundance mindset? Do you think that you always have more than enough? Or do you think that you can just barely get by? See, a mindset is the way that we think. And the way, the meditation here, let me read some scriptures to you. So let me get some scriptures out here. So Luke 6.45, it says, A good man out of good treasure of his heart brings forth good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so I'm thinking about, okay, it's important that I line up my thought life, because it also says in Proverbs, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So, so first, we have to think about what we're thinking about. Many of us just allow thoughts just to go racing through our minds, just like vroom, 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 vroom. And a lot of them are about other people. Some of them are about yourself. And I'm thinking, what, what false words, what false lies are you hearing, are you thinking about, about yourself? Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you were raised and you were told that you're never going to amount to anything, and you've meditated on that your whole life, that you're never going to amount to anything, at some point you have to reverse that and say, no, I will amount to something in God and in his name. Otherwise, your actions are going to follow that because the meditation of your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so when there's unity in what you say, there's greater power and there's greater authority. And by unity, what I mean is when there's unity in my heart and there's unity in, in, in my mind, in my soul, and then there's unity in that, and then there's unity in what I speak, power will get released. Because it's not, you can also just say whatever you want to say. Your heart has to be connected to the words that you're speaking. Are you listening to me? See, it's important that, like, like, okay, for example, these are great words. I mean, there's a bunch of them. These are great words. And I've had words that have been spoken over me, and I'm like, oh, that's such a great word. Wow, that was so powerful. And the power of God hits you and all this stuff. That was so much fun. And I don't do anything with it. Because did I really believe what was spoken? If you really believe what is spoken, you're going to think about it. You're going to meditate upon it. You're going to start declaring it over your life, and then action is going to follow. So I was working on a book, and then my computer died, crashed, bought um, a LaCroix, actually, spilled all over in it. And I lost it. I lost everything. And I was able to recover some things, but that I wasn't able to recover. And so as a result, and getting married and just the busyness and everything, I haven't gone back to like trying to work on writing a book. I've had how many words about write a book, write a book, write a book. Well, do I really believe I'm supposed to write a book? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Do, do I really believe that I'm supposed to write a book? Because if I really believe I'm supposed to write a book, I'd be thinking about it, I'd be meditating about it, I'd be speaking it, I'd be declaring it, and I'd be writing it. Okay, so when you hear, when you get a word from somebody, or if somebody has spoken something to you that is, let's say it's something negative, let's reverse it the other way, it's something negative over your life. You're a failure, you're never going to change, or your spouse is never going to change. She's never going to get it. He's never going to get it. And you don't even say those things. You just think those things. I promise you this much. Your actions are going to line up with what you think. Our thoughts are constantly directing our words, which lead to our action. So once I start declaring over myself, my heart will line up with the words that are spoken. Proverbs 23, 7, that's the, quote, the one that says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Psalm nineteen fourteen. Let the words of my mouth 
and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. So I want to get into the power of words, but first of all, I want to get into like our thought life because I really believe, I believe, I believe in the presence of God. I'm sold on his presence. I'm sold on his glory. I truly believe that he can bring transformation into somebody's heart. Because I truly believe that with all of my being, I think about it all the time. I think about it all the time. How can I help you? How can I partner with you to bring your presence to the people that you are bringing into the well and then ultimately for them to bring it into this, into this region, into this area, into the world? So I think about it all the time, all the time, because I believe it. I believe it. It's in my heart. I've seen it in my own life. I believe that people can have shame broken off of them due to the things that the mistakes that they've made in their life. Sometimes it's been things that we've done. Sometimes it's been things that other people have done to us. Why do I believe that? I have experienced it. I've walked around with a mantle of shame and didn't even know it. And it it affected me. It affected how I spoke to you. It affected how I saw you. It affected how I saw myself. It it, It affected how I carried myself because I didn't have a confidence because, oh, you've been married before. Now you've been divorced. You've been married before. You've been so I just had this 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 stigma of like I had this scarlet letter that's written on me that when I walk by somebody they're actually talking about me negatively when I walk away and I really believed that and as a result it affected the way that I did life but then truth comes you have to renew your mind with the word of truth. Truth comes and sets me free and shame gets broken off. Now I believe, listen, with all of my heart that every single person that walks around with shame can be set free because of the power of God, because it's the one thing that he said that he took for us on the cross with our sin was shame. See, the devil wants you to be down. He wants you to feel as though you can't accomplish things. But here's the other thing. It's, it's not just about what you can accomplish by yourself. Because then that's control. If you think that you're the only one that can accomplish the things in your life, then that's control. Then you have to also, again, think about what you're thinking about. Are you... Are, are you are you, do you desire, see my greatest desire, and this is, and you, and my, my team will say, absolutely it is, is to raise people up to go further and do more than I ever thought of doing. And I don't feel one ounce of jealousy. I don't feel one ounce of competitiveness. I love that. I love that. Are you kidding me? That's the greatest thing ever. And that's what we should be doing. And that's how we should be partnering with one another. And that has to start first in how you think. One way we develop A kingdom mindset is by declaring in Christ realities. You know, I think uh, Barbara Yoder talked about that last week. She talked about like the renewing of our mind. We have to renew our mind daily. I know this is like a really basic, fundamental, that's what this whole month has been about on foundation. But it seems like it's the really simple foundational things that we just forget about. It's like we throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's like because there was a name it and claim it generation that walked around in like the faith movement. It was like, oh, you just name it and claim it. So that's not right. So we're going to get rid of that. But no, there's power in what we say. We're making declarations every day whether we realize it or not. So why not be intentional about it? Because every day you're making a declaration over your spouse over your children, over your friends, over your family, over your bo- boss, your coworker, over over Grand Rapids, over the nation. Every every day you're making declarations. Every day you're aligning your words if we, you know what? If we really believed that our words had power, we would speak less and listen more. That's why we got two ears and one mouth. Right? Because sometimes it says in the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. The other day I said something. It's so funny, whenever I'm preparing something like this, my, 
my mouth is like, I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, oh, I don't even know if I believe this because I'm, I'm, I'm like writing this down, but I'm like, bleh, out of my mouth. And I'm thinking about what I'm thinking about. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I need this. I'm like, oh, this is good. Because <laughs> what I'm thinking about is not lining up with what this is saying. And I'm like, wow, I've got fear. I've got this. I've got, I've, I'm, I'm looking at all these things and I'm like, but I'm recognizing it. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to start right here. I've got to change the way that I'm thinking. And you know how you can get comfortable with family? And so you can just like, especially with family, you can just like say things. So everybody knows that, you know, Becca is like my spiritual daughter. So, and she lived with me and she would, (laughs) she would just do things sometimes that I would be like, (laughs) Becca, did you put your head on this morning? (laughs) And and it was this constant thing, right? Because she would just forget this or forget that or whatever. And so all of a sudden, this week, I said something. Somebody did something. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit convicted me. And I wanted, this is, this, is, this is why we have to be careful what we speak. And I said, oh, wow, you just had a Becca moment. And then, and I realized, this is true, love you. And then I realized, what am I doing? Listen to what I'm saying, though. It's funny, but what am I doing? I'm putting somebody in a box, and I'm not allowing them to change or transform. We do that with our spouse. We do that to the people that are the closest to us. And sometimes we do it over the president of the United States. Listen. We do it over our government officials. We have to be careful of what we speak because our words carry great power. They carry great authority. Life and death and the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat of its fruit. What does that mean? That means that if you like life, speak life. If you want death, speak death. Amen? So how do, I, how do I change this? How do I develop a kingdom mindset where, you know, it's, you can have fun. I'm not saying you can't ever make a joke. You know, don't get religious. And then all of a sudden now you're like, oh, she said what? You know, you can have fun. You can joke in your home. You should be able to do that. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being, saying things that are literally producing death in you, in your family. Come on, in your community. Because what are we wanting to do? You can, you can change every law. It does nothing unless you change a man's heart. I don't know how many, I'm just being honest, I don't know how many times I've seen it says 45. That's nice. Is that a suggestion? Because I don't always do that. And so something has to happen in my mindset to say, Listen, in my heart, my mindset, that I want to honor. I want to honor the authorities. And so that 45 is not a suggestion. It's 45. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how you bring cultural transformation. It starts with how you think. It starts with the words that you speak. And then it ends with the actions that you produce. That was a good word. Come on, give God praise. So that word confess means to agree, to, to not to deny, and to declare. So we want to confess. We want to confess what it is that God speaks about us, what he speaks about our neighbor, what he speaks about our, our government. Come on, we want to confess these things. We want to use it. This is powerful in prayer. It's powerful in prayer. Don't make all of your prayers being about changing somebody either. Just declare. Declare goodness. Declare God's, come on. You can see gold in people. Everybody has something good in them. Focus on the good and not the negative. Your experience doesn't validate your identity. Do you know that? Your past experience, good or bad, does not validate your identity. He does. I think we're all, it's great to be successful. And that's what I, that's why I looked up. I was like, I want to, I love to follow and, and um, successful people. I love to read books of people who have accomplished great things in life, but that can't be my identity and that shouldn't be their identity. But what it is, is it gives me tools and understanding of like, these are really kingdom principles so that I can do something that makes a difference in my life. That's going to help to empower somebody else's life. That's going to help them to empower somebody somebody else's life, and then all of a sudden, before you know it, you've got a whole culture that has been transformed. I'm telling you, I've been to, how many have been to Bethel? I've, I've been to Reading. You can feel the presence of God. 
there is something very real and very tangible about the fact that they believed that their words and the things that they did would bring transformation into that area. And so they are practicing it. They're not just sitting in seats and hearing a great message on Sunday morning. They're actually taking what it is that they're getting there, school, everything else that they're offering, and they're actually applying it into their lives. And that city is being transformed for Jesus. Come on, give God praise. Oh, I don't have much time. So your words are meant to launch you and not to limit you. My, what, I, what I think about myself, see, my, my words, they frame my world. They make my world. So if, if I don't believe that, okay, see, here's a great example. I remember when we were, this is m- months ago. I, this is not where I'm at right now. I remember thinking, hello. Um, have you forgotten that we need a building? And there's like, you know, there's nothing out there. Uh, we've done, I mean, we've researched, researched, researched. And, and I, I thought, you know, hmm. And I started to like get no, like I had zero faith. Because I, I, I was operating out of doubt and unbelief. And when you're operating out of doubt and unbelief, then you're not operating out of faith. You're not really believing what it is that God has said is going to come to pass. And so if God has said it, it'll come to pass. And it's going to come to pass the way that he says it'll come to pass. Right? When God opens a door, no man can shut it. When God shuts the door, no man can open it. And so then you align yourself. You, you, can see, you have to see it. Here, let me try to get you to see something. So I believe that when God spoke the word, right? He spoke the word. Jesus is the word. He spoke the word. The Holy Spirit was hovering. This is in creation. The Holy Spirit's like waiting, 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 waiting. The picture I always get is he's on the starting block. You know, this is what I see him doing. Like he's just waiting, waiting, waiting. He's waiting for the word to be spoken. He's waiting for the word to be spoken. I believe that the father was so creative that he saw what he was going to create before he spoke it. Right? So that's the power of our thoughts. If you see something, look, I started, when I started working out, I had no, I had like zero, zero muscle tone, none. Like I'd wave, my arm kept waving when I was done. I was like, well, that's nice. It's still going. But, but, but I believed in what I was doing. I could see the end result. And so I kept doing it and kept doing it. And it takes a long time before you see anything. And so most people are like, I've been doing this for three months. Haven't lost a pound. Don't see any difference. I might as well just eat. Well, no, you have to keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. You have to see it. Once you see it, come on. I, ugh, when, you, when you see it, you will believe it. I'm talking about in your mind's eye. When you see it and then begin to speak it and begin to declare it, there's something about even declaring it before you can see it and believe it. But I'm saying when all of this starts to come together, that's when power is released. That's when transformation comes into you. That's when transformation comes into the people that are around you. It's like you really believe what you are saying. So if I say, don't just listen to a message. Go, grab a hold of it, get into the Bible, find out why you believe what you believe. Because there's more power in that when you're expressing that to the people that are around you. Does that make sense? Come on, we're called to bring transformation. We're called to empower people. We're not called to be an island unto ourselves. We're called to be a family of God. We're called to be a body of believers. And it has to start first with what are you thinking about what you're thinking about? Come on. Hmm. The reason why it's so hard for a lot of Christians is because they don't believe who God says they are. And so they act out of duty and not out of relationship and belief. If you only know the acts of God and not his ways, then you're likely to have a works mentality. Come on. When you do, when you're, okay, so, Psalm 103, 7 says this. He made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. Moses acted out of intimacy because he knew the ways of God, so he experienced the acts of God. Israel, they knew the acts of God, but they didn't know the ways of God. And so they always would look at what they had. 
We, well, oh, we, we need manna. We have to have more manna. We need something else to eat. Well, there's giants that are in the land. So they didn't know the ways of God. They only knew the acts of God. If they knew who he was, when they went to spy out the land, it wouldn't have mattered what they saw because they knew the ways of God and they knew that God was greater. Come on, acts of God alone is not enough. Seeing God move is not enough. Because they saw God move. Come on, they, they parted the Red Sea. He, they walked through. Are you kidding me? I'd be, and I would have been running through that thing. I would have been like, at any moment, that wall of water is going to come washing right out over me. And then and since they walked right through it, I'd be going like, it's right now. please don't come down, don't come down, don't come down, don't come down. I mean, that is a huge act, is it not? Yet why did they not, why did they still always doubt? Because they had to know him. They had to know the ways of God that comes through intimacy, that comes through the word of God, that th comes through us believing what the word says. Yeah. Yeah. Ephesians 4, 29. This will be the, ooh, this hurts so good for everybody. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. How do we grieve him? By doing the opposite of doing that. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. Now turn with me to James 3. So we realize that our life moves in the direction of our words, right? Our words frame our world. My life moves in the directions that my words move. Hmm. If you don't believe that words have that much power, do a little study as to why God made Zacharias mute so that he couldn't speak and name Jesus something else. I'm not, I'm not Jesus, but you understand what I'm saying. Be very careful of what you say. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, also able to bridle the whole body. That word perfect is mature. So it's possible to come to a place where our words don't cause other people to stumble. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships, as although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue... It's a little member, it boasts great things. See how great a forest, a little fire kindles. And I think we've all been burned by the fire of a tongue. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it is set by, on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless God our Father, and with it we curse men, who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. He says, my brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. It's hard here, Matthew 12, 36, I'm going to close with this. It says, but I tell you that every careless word that people speak, 
they shall give an accounting for in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Thank God for repentance. Serious. I'm very serious. Um, when I was preparing, and I, have, I don't want to keep going because last, last week we were really late. Um, it's so important that we think about what we're thinking about, right? Yeah. That our thoughts are lining up with, with, what God's, what, with what God is saying, his word, his word. What is he saying into the situation? What is he saying about you? What is he saying about your spouse? What is he saying about your coworker, your, your boss? What's he saying about your neighbor? What is God saying? These are such simple foundational things. And yet we find ourselves saying things all the time, making declarations that don't line up with what the word of God says. And then we wonder why we're walking around the way that we're walking around. And some of it's poverty. If you have a poverty mindset and you can't see wealth, you see it as being evil because somebody told you it was evil to have money. And so whenever you see somebody who has money, you think they're automatically, they're just worldly. Right away, you think they're worldly. You don't know anything about them because you were told that people have money, that, that that's not good because God doesn't want you to have money. And so that became a mindset, which became a stronghold. Right. When really, I mean, it says and if, if, there's so much more about money in the Bible than there is about anything, any other topic. God wants us to have wealth. He wants us to have money, not just so we can have nice things, although he doesn't mind if we have nice things as long as the nice things don't have us, but so that it takes money to get the gospel out. It takes money to produce things and to create things. And you know what? I wish we, didn't, we weren't moved by this. I wish we weren't moved by this, but guess what? People are moved by what they see. And so when you want to produce a video, you want to produce a video to a caliber that it's going to cause people to go like, wow, that's amazing. And, and you know what? They're getting it. They're, people, oh, so listen, they're getting it. Used, Christian movies used to be so cheesy and lame and the acting was awful. And I'm like, I have to watch it because it's a Christian movie. And I'm a Christian, so I can only watch a Christian movie, but this acting is awful. I could, could do a better job. And they're getting it though, right? They're getting it. And so they're raising the bar. They're raising the say, come on, as Christians, we're not supposed to be acting down here. We're the ones that set the standard. That only happens to the degree that the way that you think. I'm telling you, it's all right here. It's right here. This is what frames my world. This is what shapes my world. At the end of the day, do I really believe the prophetic words that have been spoken over my life? Do I really believe the prophetic words that have been spoken over your life? Do I really believe what the word of God says can, that I can do? Do I really believe it? Do I really, am I thinking about it? Am I, do I really believe what I'm reading? Do I really believe that when it says that you and your own household can be saved, do I really believe that? Do I really believe that God can save the most miserable, sinful, murderer, person? Yes, do you really believe that he wants to? Yes, he does. But if you don't believe that, God will not be able to use you to speak life into that situation. Do I really believe that this nation, once again, can, be, can have its... It's beauty, it's favor, it's reputation. Do I really believe that this nation can have all of that back? Where people look at the United States of America as a place that's so desirable to live, as a place that, is, that, is, that supports Israel. Come on, come on, do I really believe? Yes, I do. And because I believe that, I think about it and I declare it. And that's what has power. Not just a declaration alone. God said, you know what? He said they, they um, how's that go? They, something with my lips. They praise me with their lips for their heart is far from, far from me. They honor me with their lips. They, they say things. That's a religious spirit. But their heart is far from me. That doesn't produce, listen to me. That's why, that's why when people speak evil things, that's because it's out of the evilness of their heart and it brings destruction. If I speak hateful things to you, it's gonna make you feel horrible. 
right? Because it's coming out of, the, out of a hurtful, hateful heart. But what you have to learn, just a seed for thought, when people do that, they're the ones that are hurting. Hurting people hurt people. And so when I learned that, those are the people that God gave me. A bunch of people were just like, arr, arr, arr. and I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, it's true. One moment they're sending me a curse letter, the next moment they're saying, I love you. And I'm like, oh, praise God. Why? Because they're hurting. When you've been hurt, that's what you do, right? And then God heals you and you learn to love again. So as Christians, if somebody's doing that to you, just love them. It's the greatest thing. Just love them. Come on, give God praise. Just love them. Stand to your feet. Father, I thank you for the word. I thank you for your presence that brings transformation. It brings reformation. God, I say, come and do it again. We ask, God, for a mighty awakening that you shake this nation, that you shake every person in this place, that we would think about what we're thinking about, that our words, they carry weight and they carry power. God, may we use it to be blessing and not cursing. God, may we be thoughtful. May we be thankful. May we be a people who want to be used by you only because we first have had intimacy with you. So this week, I declare for every person in this place a successful week, a week full of the presence of God, the joy of the Lord, peace, health, happiness. God, I thank you for all of your goodness to just flow through like rivers of living water. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.